Hello, all my beautiful people of the world. It's the Creative Rush here, and I am your host, of course. And today is another episode of videos about video games. What am I doing with my life? This is part two, dos, numero doso, the second one of survival horror games. Back in our last episode, we witnessed the terrible voice acting, which is Resident Evil. Not as bad as the original, but still pretty bad. <laughs> And if you watch that video, you'll know what we're covering today, where we're going to be covering tank controls and how to put fixed camera angles in your own game so you can have that sort of aesthetic you see in the Resident Evil games. Or at least the Resident Evil games until they got really, really good and then got really, 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 really bad. I'm talking to you, Resident Evil 6. Shame on you. Well, enough of me ranting about how bad Capcom's getting, and let's get into Unity. Well, I can see that comment's gonna get me pulled off YouTube, so I'll see you guys later. Bye. If all you guys follow the tutorial correctly, you should end up with a little something like this. You have a character in your scene, as represented by Kyle the robot there. Say hi, Kyle! Um, uh, uh, hi, guys! Uh, that was, that was Kyle. That was really Kyle right there. Um, so yeah, you'll have a little guy in your scene that rotates around like he does in Resident Evil, like we played. And you'll have the tank control, so moving forward, moving backwards, etc. He moves backwards a little slower, like they do in Resident Evil. And also, the big one, you'll have switching fixed camera angles. So we have our little doorway, doorway right here. Walk through that, and we'll be in a different angle. If we go back, walk back through here, we have a different camera angle again. All right, all right, all right. Now that we have our example done, we're going to check out the actual tutorial. Now, just a quick uh, little uh, thing I want to say before I start. I've noticed that a lot of my videos are coming out lower quality video, and that's because I can't use any software to record the gameplay on my computer, so I'm using a capture card. I know it's not the best way, but my computer, it runs at a uh, 1368 by 768 uh, pixels. I think it's 1368. Is that what? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. I'm probably wrong. But it runs on that, which means that the capture card that makes the the window where the game is really small or not the game the software we're using unity it makes it really small in video that makes it so that there's a bunch of black bars around it and the pixel size becomes greater in that concentrated area so that means when i expand it there won't be as many pixels so that's why my video has been blurry i think i fixed it i just changed some resolution settings but yeah i think i got a better video now so to the tutorial First, we're going to create a little area, a little house. I'll be right back with that. Alright, now that we have our room here, we're going to add our first person controller. Which again, might sound weird, because we're not making a first person game, but you'll see, because that actually has something to do with the tank controls we're going to add. So we're going to go to standard assets, characters, first person controller, and drag them in. Make them a little bigger. Not bigger, raise them a little bit. Alright, but here's the thing. Seeing as though we're going to be uh, looking at it from here and rotating it around, we're not going to be able to see that rotation if we have them in a little capsule, so we're going to add a model. We have the trusty help of what we had before, our little Kyle the robot here. Come on in, Kyle. Yeah, there he is. Look how cute he is. Come on, come, come over here, Kyle. Look, look at this guy. 
How can you not love that face? This is like the next Disney sidekick cute right there. All right, well, we're going to add this guy, and we're going to figure out where he belongs. Maybe he belongs nowhere. Maybe he's an outcast. Who knows? But hey, that's what we're here to do. We're here to make stuff and figure things out because we are smart. Raise that up until it's above the cubes. And then drag this little dude over here. Gonna maybe grow him a little bit. Until he fits the first person controller. I'm gonna down a tad bit. Go go down a tad bit. Alright, and then I'm gonna move him forward. There we go. So we're gonna take Robot Kyle and attach him to the first person controller. We're gonna delete graphics. We don't need that. That's okay. Yes, hit continue. Losing papa. Losing profob. Alright, so we're gonna get a main camera. Hit delete. So you'll see we just have a guy here. Does really nothing. As of now, that is. Ha ha! So we're gonna go to create. Uh, camera. I've, yeah, alright, camera. Haven't been in Unity for a while, actually. I, I kind of forget a few things. Now, you can do it, put this camera wherever you want. I'm just going to rotate it so it's a good camera. Whoa. All right, maybe I should just stick to the default axis. Ease, axes. What is the default of axis? I'm not sure. Leave that in the comments. Axes, axi, axises, or is it just axis? I don't know. I have a feeling that it's ax axi. I don't know why. It just sounds right. All right, so we're going to move that to where we want that in our game. Um, I don't know. That looks about good. I'd say that works. Right, now we're going to... We don't have to duplicate the camera, but you're going to want to add another camera. Set all its values to zero. All of its rotation values to zero. Then we're going to drag it down here. I want it to be a little bit in the corner in this area so I'm gonna rotate it around here then move it on down here then rotate a little more alright now our camera is set right there we're going to name this one camera 1 and camera 2. And there we go. Now we got our camera set up. So before we cover the fixed camera angles and such, we're going to work on the first person controller and make them into a tank controller. Now I have a script prepared here and I've named it tank controls. It's a C sharp script. So we're going to open that real quick. All right, so this is our tank control script. Now, I'm not going to go over this whole thing because this is actually a Unity default script. So we have a script called character motor. It's pretty much the same thing as our tank control script. Wait. All right, sorry, wrong script. It's our uh, mouse look script. All right, sorry about that. So we have our mouse look script, and it's a Unity default script, and it's the same as our tank control script. Only there's one little difference. You'll see in mouse look script, we'll have mouse X, mouse X and Y set up. But in our tank control script, we've changed that to horizontal and vertical. So just take mouse look, copy that into a different C sharp script, label tank controls, or just go into the mouse look and change that. And you're going to want to change mouse X and mouse Y to horizontal and vertical. You're going to go and save that. Then drag it into the first person controller. And you're going to delete mouse look. Bye bye. All right, well now you've got that. We're going to test this out. See how it turned out.
So you, we have this going on, which isn't good. We don't want that. And super spinny dude. We have a breakdancing robot here. All right. So we're going to change the Y sensitivity. We're going to change the Y sensitivity to zero. So our character doesn't do that weird moving up and down thing when you move back and forth. Also, wait, one second. I want to test something. All right, so you'll see you'll move back and forth and he won't tilt. All right, now there's another problem. One, our character spins around too fast for our horror game. And two, when he spins, he sort of moves. We don't want him to do that. First, I think my phone just misunderstood me for Hey Siri. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to change the sensitivity to maybe about six, because you rotate pretty slow in Resident Evil, let's face it. And set the max sideways speed to 0.5. Now, if we go into our game, you'll see our character rotates much slower, and he doesn't move around when he rotates. The reason I don't just set the sideways speed to zero is because for some reason, when you set to zero, all the other movement areas just stop working. I attempted to just make it, you can't do that, you can't move sideways whatsoever, but I couldn't figure it out, it just went weird, so... We're going to make you go a little slower, so 3.5, I'll say. And backwards, we're going to set to 2. Because you do move pretty slow in Resident Evil. Let's test out our character. Move that speed backwards, and the speed forwards, then rotates around like that. All right, well, now we have our tank control guy done. So when you hit A and D, or whatever you have for horizontal in your game, uh, you'll rotate around. And then when you hit W and or S, depending on whatever you have for vertical, that's default for Unity, you'll move forwards and backwards. Also works with the arrow buttons. Left and right rotate, up and down, move back and forth. All right then, now we just gotta do the fixed camera angles, which is the big one, the one horror thing that we've been wanting to do. So to do that, we have a script called Camera Switch. Let's open that up real quick. So here's what Camera Switch does. We're going to set up a collider in our scene, and it's going to make it so when we walk through that collider, our uh, camera will switch. So we have two variables. Variable 1, which is camera 1. Whoops. Highlight the thing I want you to highlight. Camera 1, which is, well, the first camera. And variable camera 2, which is also a camera, obviously. Then our private variable, walk in, that's going to be signifying whether we walked in, walked through it, stuff like that. All right, so function start. This is what it's set to when you start the scene. So in the beginning, camera one dot camera dot enabled. This means that camera one, the camera, this is its enabled state. So enabled will equal true, but camera two, it's enabled will equal false. So that it's not enabled, it's disabled. Now we have function on trigger collide dot col uh, colon collider. This makes it so it shows when you've walked in. So if call.tag or collider equals player, so the tag that enters is the player. Also remember, to, when you go to your first person controller and set this up, your first person controller has to be tagged player. I'll make sure it is when we start. Walk in equals exclamation walk in. That's just showing you know you've walked in. Function update. If walk in equals true, which means you have walked in, camera one's enabled now equals false. You remember it did equal true, but now that we've walked through the collider, it now equals false, and camera two equals true. And if walk in equals false, which means we haven't walked in or we walked through a second time, then camera one will be true and camera two will be false. You're gonna go and save that. And then drag it, um... Alright, you know what? Actually, first, let's check to see if our first person... Uh, <laughs> let's go check our first person controller is tagged with player, and it's not. We're going to go over here, where it says tag. We're going to make it a player. Alright, now, 
we're going to want to create a, another box. So we're going to take our doorway or whatever you've built. I just built this little room for demonstration. And you're going to put it where the doorway is or where the camera will switch. So you'll walk through here when your camera switches in our scene. Now we're going to get rid of the mesh renderer and the cube mesh filter. And we'll just have a box collider. We're going to set this to is trigger. This means it works with scripts. You can trigger script ev scripted events with it and such and such and such. So drag camera switch into that. We're going to name this camera collider. Camera one, we're going to assign camera one. Whoops. And camera two, we're going to assign camera two, of course. So now you'll see we'll go into our scene, or go into play mode, I should say. We rotate around, move back and forth with tank controls. Then when we go through this door, our camera angle will change. So now we can see th at this angle. If we go back through, our camera angle is back here. And it will keep on doing that until the end of time. I hope this tutorial helped because that is how you create a Resident Evil style tank controls and fixed camera angles in your own game. But since there's nothing else to say, I'll see all you guys in the next video. See you later. Well, I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, why not leave a like and to keep up to date on my latest content, hit the subscribe button right here. If you want me to play any fun games or if you want to learn anything about making your own games, leave it in the comments way down below. If you want to watch my part one on playing Resident Evil, hit the, hit the link right here. And if you want to watch my last tutorial on learning how to make a first person controller, an improved first person controller, hit the link right here. And if you want to listen to this cool song playing right now, it's by Techno Axe and it's called Laser Gun Fight. He makes other really cool royalty free music that you can use in your videos. His channel is right here. See ya.